Hi everybody, welcome to Go In 5 Minutes episode number 31. So today we're going to take another uh, quick break from the Buffalo Framework series and we're going to talk about a different HTTP server framework. Um, and this is one that is more geared towards writing API servers. Uh, so like things like REST API servers uh, or other kinds of HTTP based API servers. So this framework is called the Echo Framework. Um, it has been around for a while. It has gone through a couple of changes, uh, but overall, I think it's a really, really great, easy, uh, simple to get started framework for writing quick web services. So uh, this episode is uh, covering issue number 98 that was submitted to the Go in Five Minutes repo. Um, so this one asks for covering uh, the Echo Framework. Um, the submitter says uh, he thinks the framework deserves a tutorial, and uh, I totally agree. So uh, let's get into some code. We're going to look at some basics and uh, a little bit about how middleware works in um, this uh, code sample as well. So as always, starting in the main.go, uh, in funk main, the first thing we do is create an echo.new. So this creates the main echo uh, router. Uh, so on echo.new, on that value, we basically call dot use, which is right here, and then dot get down here, all of these very, uh, all of these calls, excuse me, dot get dot get here, and then we also have a dot post. Um, so as you might be uh, guessing, the dot get and dot post are registering URL paths uh, for those specific HTTP methods. Um, and then you pass a path in. So here we're handling uh, a get request to slash request count. This is a post request to slash JSON. Uh, and then this one's a little bit more interesting. So this is a get request to slash pluralize slash some variable. Um, so that variable is gonna be called singular path param. Uh, and that is a constant in our code base. Uh, and we will end up getting the value of this variable uh, inside of our pluralize handler, and we'll see how that works. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we basically just call e.start. Uh, then we use the echo built-in logger to handle uh, the error and basically crash the server uh, if there was an error doing the serving. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna start with our middleware e.use is how you register middleware. Um, we have two built-in ones, a logger and uh, one that does compression. And if you're not familiar with middleware, uh, the basic idea is these are uh, pieces of code that run before your actual handler gets run. So for example, we've got a middleware called a logger. Uh, this is one that basically logs out a summary of the entire HTTP request that came in uh, and then it calls your handler. Um, and there's also some other features that end up returning uh, or end up logging out the response code and the response body and so on uh, that your handler created. So let's go check out that middleware uh, that we've created called request counter. We register it here on line 24. So request counter um, has this process method and this has the signature of middleware. So it takes in a echo handler func uh, that we call next, and then it returns an echo handler func. So the way that it works is we uh, are creating a function that has the same signature as echo.handler func. And then inside of it, we're incrementing a counter atomically, and then we are calling that next echo.handler func. So this is, we're doing some work. In this case, we're incrementing a counter and then we're moving on and calling either the next middleware in the chain or the actual handler that was registered. And we don't really care whether it's the next handler uh, or the next middleware or the next handler. It doesn't really matter to us. We're just kind of moving down in the chain. And then since this is a request counter, it's counting the total number of requests that have ever been made on the running server. We also have a handler down here. Uh, so this is a standard echo handler, completely separate from the middleware. 
It just happens to be defined as a method on the same struct. And this is what handlers look like. So you'll notice here, this uh, echo.handler funk is the exact same thing as here. This is the echo handler to handle that get path that uh, I showed on main. So then uh, if we are doing a get on this handle handler, uh, we are gonna call context.string. So this C is the echo context right here. We're gonna call context.string. We're gonna say we're gonna return a 200 okay. Uh, and then we're just gonna return the counter for number of requests that have been made. So going back to main, uh, we have now covered what a middleware looks like and how it works. And then we've also covered the handler here. So that's the one that I just showed. Uh, the last one I wanna go check out, uh, actually we'll check out two. Uh, I wanna show the pluralize handler and that's up here. And then also the JSON handler. This is one that deals with a post request. So first up, pluralize handler. This one is fairly simple. Uh, we see we've got the c.string again. Those are familiar from the handler that was on the number of requests. Uh, but then up here, we've got two interesting ones. We've got c.param and c.queryparam. So first off, c.param is the code that grabs that path parameter out. Uh, so that path parameter again was here. And notice we've called the path parameter singular path param. And then we're, we're extracting it from the path uh, by its name, singular path param. Um, this c.param returns a string, as you can see up here. Uh, so down below, we are trying to convert the string to a number. Uh, and then we're just calculating. If the number is one, then we wanna return the singular. Uh, and if the number is not one, we're gonna try to pluralize that word. <clears throat> then numster here, um, this is a query parameter. So this is the parameter that ha that was in the query string. Uh, the key of the query string parameter is num, and then the value is some number. Uh, and that is the number we're gonna do an if on to see if we should try to pluralize the word. Okay, last piece is the post request. So we have a thing called JSON handler that's gonna handle a post request to slash JSON. JSON handler is over here. And this is interesting because we now are taking in a request body and the request body is represented in this struct. So request body is a dictionary that has an X and a Y key. So that would be here and here. Those are both gonna be integers. And the way that we decode the JSON is a little bit higher level than using the uh, standard library JSON thing, uh, JSON package. So what we do here is we create a new pointer to coordinates uh, and then we do context.bind. So context.bind is going to take the HTTP post body. It's going to try to decode it into our coordinates struct. And then if it didn't return any error, then we can start using it. So we do the standard error check here. And by the time we get to our c.string, we know that the coordinate struct is going to have our x and y integers filled in. Okay. So now that we have the basic functionality, let's go check out how to actually test this thing out. Let's see it in action. So we're heading over to our make file. Uh, we've got some nice handy um, pre-filled actions. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build and then we'll do our run. And up, oh, I already had one running before. So we'll do our build here. We'll do our run here. And Echo has some nice handy uh, console output. Um, it's got some good logging. It's cool that it's all colorful. Uh, and we'll see some more logs coming in this way as well. So going back to our make file, uh, we're gonna start with the pluralize handler. Uh, then we're gonna test out the uh, request count middleware and that get endpoint. Uh, and then we'll test out that JSON post endpoint as well. So let's start. We're gonna do our, uh, in a new terminal window, we're gonna do our make test pluralize. And we've got a lot of output, that's because we're doing these curl dash V, and these are for um, verbose output. So the first one we see here is we're doing our slash pluralize slash boat. So remember boat is the path parameter, uh, and we're saying I wanna pluralize one boat. That's where the num equals one comes in. 
So that returns boat, as you would expect. The second one we're doing here is we're gonna to try to pluralize boat for two boats. So if we head all the way down to the end, now we have boats. So that does what we expect. Two boats should be called boats. One boat should be called boat. So fairly simple, uh, but it kind of shows off some of those features of handling that get request and handling dynamic data that comes in. All right, second piece is test middleware. So middleware is gonna get the number of requests that come in. So we've already made two requests here. We made this request to get one boat, this request to get two boats. So that's two so far. We're gonna do another request to our get endpoint. And that get endpoint is also going to have the middleware run before we get to our handler. So what we expect to get back here is three. Let's clear the screen, test middleware, and there we go. So we did our request to request count. We already had two. Then we ran the third request. That's called get slash request count here. And then we got back three because that was the third request that came down. And the last one, we're gonna test out our JSON. So you can see here, we're submitting a JSON body right over here in the dash D, that's data for the post body. And we are, we are sending up uh, the integers one, two, three for X and four, five, six for Y. And this should return back just as a reminder, a string to the client. So it should say X coordinate equals one, two, three, Y coordinate should equal four, five, six. So we're gonna run the test-json target. Clear the screen here, test-json. And you see here, this is the uh, curl request that we're running, one, two, three, and four, five, six, and then going all the way down past the verbose output, and we see here, x is one, two, three, y is four, five, six. So those are the basics. We saw how to do get requests, we saw how to deal with uh, variables that are coming in via the path or the query string. We also saw how to do post requests or other requests that have an HTTP request body uh, and how to pull data out uh, and decode that data uh, into a real Go structure. So uh, we have some show notes. The show notes are um, all about Echo. So they have links to the Echo homepage links to the GitHub page for Echo. Uh, we also have a link to uh, an explanation of how middleware, middlewares work in Go. Uh, say that one five times fast. Um, so I really encourage you to go check out Echo. Uh, it's pretty easy to drop into a project uh, if you're trying to make a quick little API server or something like that. Um, it's kind of just a good tool to have in your tool belt. So definitely go check it out. Uh, that's gonna be it for today and I will hope to see you next time. Take care, gophers.